Steve Jobs is a man who needs no introduction, but here's one anyways. He is widely considered one of the greatest entrepreneurs of all time. Usually when people speak about Steve, they discuss what it was like to work with him or how he changed the world. But in this video, I'm going to highlight what I believe are three of the top reasons for Steve Jobs' success that aren't spoken about enough. The man who revolutionized several multi-billion dollar industries and who completely changed how humans live had many unique characteristics that led him to entrepreneurial success. I believe these three qualities can be adopted by anyone and are necessary to obtain the level of success that Steve did. So let's start off with what I believe to be his most important quality as a businessman. Number one, laser-like focus. By all accounts, Steve's ability to focus seemed superhuman to those he worked with. When most people think about Steve, they think about the products he helped innovate or perhaps his controversial personality. But I think something he should be equally recognized for was his ability to focus intensely on what truly mattered. Steve was the most re remarkably focused person I've ever met in my life. When Jobs came back to Apple in 1997, the company was on the brink of bankruptcy. He quickly noticed that this was due to Apple producing too many different low quality products simultaneously. He felt the company had no focus on product quality and innovation, and it clearly translated into massive losses year after year. So Steve cut the product line down by a reported 70% so Apple could direct all of its attention to a smaller line of products. In his biography by Walter Isaacson, when asked to provide his rationale, now for doing this, Steve said, deciding what not to do is as important as deciding what to do. It's true for companies and it's true for products. The results proved Steve right very quickly as Apple went from losing over $1 billion a year when he arrived to becoming profitable in the year that followed. When most of us think about how to set ourselves up for success, we think about adding more things to our lives. For example, in school, we may have thought about downloading productivity apps, creating schedules, implementing the Pomodoro technique, etc. Things we previously did not need. And although these would be effective, the truth, however, is that most individuals would actually be helping themselves far more from something as simple as deleting all of their social media accounts. Or if you have friends or coworkers who constantly create drama or any other form of distraction, Action. Recognizing it and removing it from your life as much as possible would greatly improve your focus as well. Perhaps you've outgrown your friends whose lack of ambition is preventing you from pursuing yours. Replace them with individuals whose goals align with yours. The point is, the next time you feel you've become too deviated from your goals, consider first thinking about what you should remove from your life before you think about what should be added. Something else Steve refused to pay any attention to was the opinion of others about himself. He felt that as long as as the work at hand was being done properly, it didn't actually matter what anyone thought of him as a person. Now I don't think you need to take it to the extremes that he did, but this is something that many individuals struggle with constantly, but are unaware of how much it takes away from their ability to focus on what truly matters. In the best-selling book, Mastery by Robert Greene, there's a section in the book titled, Suffer Fools Gladly. Robert describes how inevitably, even the most brilliant individuals in the world have to encounter pushback from irrelevant people along their journeys towards success for no good reason. These individuals, or fools as Green puts it, attempt to hurt you out of emotion and lower you down to their levels. They try to thwart your attention away from your long-term goals and instead have you caught up in your emotions and focusing too much on things like reputation and politics, which will negatively affect you tremendously in the long run. Steve had zero tolerance for any of this because he recognized how much it would take away from the quality of the products he was trying to develop. In our own lives, we should think about how much time we spend on things that don't matter Matter, like what someone else is doing with their lives, what other people think about us, etc. Ultimately, none of these things matter, and by taking our attention away in the moment for prolonged periods of time, we are taking away from our own long-term success. If you truly want to be amongst the best in the world, recognize that you will run into individuals who will attempt to throw you off your path, and that you must be ruthless in not allowing them to do so. You should set very strict boundaries for yourself, both physically and mentally, so that your focus is always on your long-term goals and the individuals who truly matter in your life. Number two, dedication to details. 
In Jobs' biography, author Walter Isaacson highlights a time in Steve's childhood when he helped his adopted father build a fence in front of their home. Steve's father Paul was a machinist and someone who believed in the importance of details, even the details others would never see. When building the fence, he told Steve about how you had to put just as much effort into the back of the fence as the front. Paul said, even though nobody will see it, you will know, and that will show that you're dedicated to making something perfect. Steve brought this mindset with him as he helped innovate various products throughout his career. He then taught this lesson to his engineers at Apple. They were instructed to make sure that internal aspects of a product, including such things as how memory chips inside of the computer were placed, had to not only be functional, but aesthetically pleasing even though no customer would see it. I have no doubt that this attention to detail added to the allure of Apple products and was a big reason why they sold so successfully under Steve's reign. Something a lot of people underestimate or perhaps don't consider at all when creating a product or service to sell is the fact that people can tell whether you actually put a lot of effort into creating it. There are many products that I've purchased that appear to be premium products based on how they looked, but as soon as I picked them up and actually put them to use, I quickly realize that they are low quality products and I then decide I no longer want to purchase them. On the flip side, I remember as a kid going into the Apple store and picking up an iPhone, being able to feel that I was holding a premium product while using it. It truly felt like it was worth the money. The allure that already existed because of the commercials and mass hype was now elevated because the product lived up to the expectations that I had. I believe the attention to detail is what allowed a big part of that to happen and this then led to the billions of dollars in sales that took Apple from being in Microsoft's shadow in the 1990s to eventually becoming the world's most valuable publicly traded company in 2011. Number 3. Fabricate Pressure to Achieve the Impossible If you've ever watched a movie or documentary about Steve Jobs, or even read his biography, then you're familiar with what people who knew him called his reality distortion field. Steve refused to believe that he had any limitations and that rules that most people lived by did not apply to him. He sincerely believed that nothing was impossible for him or the individuals working directly under him. One of the ways he implemented this concept as a manager was by setting extreme deadlines for his engineers to complete projects. For example, something his engineers would tell him would take a year to finish, he would tell them they could and had to do it in only three months, and the engineers would miraculously pull it off. One of his employees at the time, Debbie Coleman, described it as, you did the impossible because you didn't realize it was impossible. Steve, however, was not the first great innovator to use extreme deadlines to push the limits of reality. There are many examples of individuals who deliberately increased the pressure on themselves to deliver results because they knew it would bring the best out of them. One of these individuals was the great inventor Thomas Edison. He reportedly held himself to a standard of churning out a minor invention every 10 days and a major invention every 6 months. Some sources say this was only for idea generation and not for actual invention. However, the principle still applies. Edison knew that without pressure, he would not have the incentive to focus intensely on his work and would therefore not live up to his potential. According to Robert Greene, Edison would deliberately talk to the press about an idea before it was ready. This would create some publicity and excitement in the public as to the possibilities of the proposed invention. If he dropped the ball or let too much time pass, his reputation would suffer and so his mind would spark into high gear and he would make it happen. Edison of course is credited as one of the greatest inventors of all time, so I'm sure this method of deliberately increasing the pressure on oneself would greatly improve an individual's production. I can also attest to this myself to an extent. In my undergraduate studies, I noticed that I would always get better grades on essays I wrote at the last minute compared to essays I wrote several days or weeks before the deadlines. I realized that four to six hours of hyper-focused work delivered far better results than the same work spread out over several days and cut up into smaller work sessions. I believe the main factor in what forced me to work at such a pace and with such focus was the fact that I had the pressure of a deadline in the back of my mind the entire time I was working. So when it comes to achieving great feats, like Jobs and Edison often did, pressure can help you push your limits and make you produce results you didn't think were possible. Don't wait until the last minute, however. Set your own deadlines much earlier than your actual deadlines, or find other unique ways, like Edison did with the media, to add pressure on yourself to deliver results. So those are what I believe to be three of the top reasons for Steve Jobs' success as an entrepreneur and businessman. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something valuable and I'll see you in the next one.